name is Jenny and I'm so happy to be here with you today on Handmade. It is rapidly approaching my favorite season. No, I'm not necessarily talking about summer. I'm talking about frozen cocktail season. I'm coming to you today with a pretty genius way to make your favorite frozen beverages. Let's get started. I'm sure most of you have made frozen drinks in a blender. I mean, we all have, but I'm here to tell you there's a better way, an ice cream maker. You're gonna start with one cup of frozen pineapple, one 16 ounce can of coconut milk. You could just use a mix and throw it directly in the ice cream machine, but making it from scratch is gonna taste a lot better. So we're gonna blend this so it's nice and smooth. Using the can for all of the other measurements on this drink, because it's just ratios. One pineapple juice, about one half of a can of coconut rum, and about three quarters of a can of dark rum. And to give it a pretty pink color, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of grenadine. Once you have your mixture, you just pour it into your ice cream maker. And that's literally it. You can make your mixture the night before, pour it in the machine right before your guests arrive, and it takes about 30 to 45 minutes for it to be the perfect consistency. We're gonna set this aside, let it freeze, and start on the next one. We're gonna start with two cups of margarita mix, one and a half cups of white tequila, half a cup of triple sec, half a cup of orange juice, and the juice from about three limes. Okay. The biggest advantage of this high-end machine is that you don't need a frozen bowl or pre-frozen ingredients. Okay, I think this one might be my favorite. Just look at this consistency. Perfect. Last one. So the main reason I love making frozen cocktails in an ice cream maker over a blender is because you don't add any ice so they never get watered down. Welcome back to Handmade, I'm Jill. Sock tank pools have been trending and it's easy to see why. 
We've all been home more than ever, and this is a much more affordable way to get that backyard pool that we all want. So today, I'm gonna show you how I built this stock tank pool and share with you all the tips that I learned along the way. Let's get into it. Our very first step is we are gonna use paint thinner, and we're just gonna give it a quick wipe down to kind of knock off any dirt and some of the extra shine. We are gonna use some sanding blocks. It's a fine to medium grit, and we're just gonna lightly go over this. We're gonna knock off a lot of that shine from the metal, and that is to help make our primer and our paint stick a lot better. And now, to get off all that sanding dust and the gray that is accumulated, we're just gonna knock it down with some plain white vinegar and just clean that up a little bit. We wanna get all that off before painting. So we're gonna let this continue to dry, but we're gonna go ahead and use painter's tape and just some cheap craft paper. We don't want this lip to be silver. We want it to be painted the same as the outside of our pool. So we're gonna tape off the inside so that we don't have any overflow spray paint. We need several coats of primer, so I'm just gonna go to town on the outside, as many coats as it takes. Too short. I've always wanted to be 5'8". We let the pool completely dry overnight, and now we're ready to start taping off to paint our stripes. So we just took a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, taped it together, and it actually fits perfectly. Sarah's gonna make little tick marks on the top and the bottom where we need to tape off for our stripes. This is just a really simple way to not have to do a ton of math and it's gonna end up perfect. I'm gonna go along, tape off the lip. We decided that we wanna keep it white just for ease of not having to use a roller to paint over the edge. We're gonna leave this one white so we know not to paint over it when we're doing our green. We're just gonna put a little section in there. This is one of the only ways I have found to make perfect stripes every time. You know, usually you peel off your tape and your paint has bled. We're gonna go back with another coat of primer over the tape, and that's gonna help seal our edges before we paint on our green stripes. So we each have a roller and our paint tray, and let's go for it, see how it looks. All right, that went super fast. Our first coat is done, and it is already pretty much dry to the touch. So I think we're gonna go ahead and add our second coat, and I love the color. And we are ready for our big reveal. We're gonna take our tape off and see how it looks. Fingers crossed we have straight, even lines. Okay, so now we're ready to drill our holes. One is gonna be for the outlet and one is for the inlet. You wanna put the outlet hole between the two ribs right in this middle level. And you wanna put your inlet down at the bottom. So the kit that we bought only came with one of these. We went ahead and bought a second one and we're just gonna use them both for the inlet and the outlet. We're gonna put this part on the inside we're gonna put some caulk on this one to go on the outside and twist it together really tightly. Once we get it over to our place, then we'll hook up the hoses and the other pieces. While Sarah's in the back hooking up the filter, I'm gonna climb inside the pool and I'm gonna use my little vacuum to get out any of the shaved metal particles and just any other dirt and grass that have accumulated. I'm also gonna wipe down the inside with just a little bit of white vinegar to get it clean before we start filling it with our water. Before we fill up the pool with a large amount of water, we're gonna check for leaks. No leaks on this side. Man, we are watertight. Hmm? pool is ready, so now we're finishing the raised bed with some small gravel. And of course, we have to make it pretty. Summertime is officially here. 
and we have a ton of energy to burn. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make an outside obstacle course with all items from the dollar store. We got to get started now. For the first part of our obstacle course, you're going to need a few solar garden lights, a couple of pool noodles, and duct tape. This way, we'll be able to make a tunnel for your little one to army crawl through. Let's get started. Now, with this solar light, it comes in with a spike, and we're going to simply push it into the ground, remove the light, take a little duct tape to cover up the hole, just in case any of those pool noodles come off. Safety first. And they are good to go. For this next one, we're going to be using a dowel and two laundry baskets. If you thought the last activity was easy to put together, this one has it beat. Pool noodle, meat, plunger. This next one takes pool noodles and duct tape. You're not seeing double. We're going to make another one of these and turn it into target practice. All done. Now it's time to let Garrison put this to the test. We love the idea of making a backyard bar. I mean, what's there not to love I know, about really, a backyard bar? And in Texas, you for sure need that. <laughs> it's an essential. We found this table base, and so we thought it would make a great addition to our backyard at the Wonder Inn and put a sink in it and make a little beverage bar. It's actually the perfect height. It's kind of counter height instead of being a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. The top's already gone. We don't even know where that where the top ever was. We so. never had the top. So, so we're just going to repurpose this base instead of trashing it and turn it into our backyard bar. The first step in converting this into your backyard bar is to get all of your measurements. And as Dad always says, measure twice, cut once. So we're going to get all the measurements, make sure we have a sink that is the right size that'll fit inside here, and then go search through our wood pile and find some wood to make the top out of. We found some salvage wood in the barn. We measured it and cut it to fit. So Amy and I found this old turquoise sink years ago. We fell in love with it. We had to buy it. We've been saving it for a long time because it really doesn't work for a house. It's super rusty. It already has holes, but it does work for this. It's going to be perfect. Typically, when we put a sink into a piece, you probably build a solid tabletop and then cut a hole out. We're going to do it a little bit differently this time. We're going to put our wood pieces in and then set our sink down. We're not actually cutting any wood out of the middle. Now that we've got this screwed down, we're going to place the sink. It's looking good. So then you nestle this last piece just right under the flange of the sink, and then you're going to screw that one in. Okay. Looks cute. So now that the sink is in, there's a lot more steps left. We're going to do some sanding now, so I'm going to mask up. We're done sanding, and now we're just going to add a few finishing touches. And no bar is complete without a bottle opener, so that's going to be the first thing we add. Okay. All right. There's so many things that you can add to kind of make it your own. You can add cutting boards. You can have a different type of top that you can cut on. The most important thing, though, I think you need to add is cold beer. 